first podcast on the internet. Um, recently, I was listening to a lot of my favorite podcasts, and I, I realized that um, most of my favorite ones have at least two or three hosts, so I uh, recruited someone. Uh, I, I recruited my friend Lisa. Hello, Lisa. What's your name? My name is Lisa. Great. Uh, you are from Iowa and you live in Texas. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, I grew up in the great United States state of Iowa, and I lived in Los Angeles, California for eight years, but now I live in Austin, Texas, so I'm an Iowan, Californian, Texan. Great. Okay, that's probably enough uh, character introduction for this episode. We want to uh, give the public info like one little bit at a time to keep them interested and engaged. Yeah. You told me that you wanted to talk about the Joker movie. Is that right? Yeah, I went and saw the Joker movie last night. Did you see it yet? Oh, uh, no, I don't think I'm going to go see it because I'm really not into comics and superheroes and all that stuff. Okay, really? Um, yeah. Have you ever seen Taxi Driver? Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, seen it like 10 years ago, but I, I remember pretty well. Well, if you like Taxi Driver, you might like joker a lot mm, well, uh, I, yeah i didn't i didn't like it so uh <laughs> i suppose I oh won't. you didn't like taxi driver N no i didn't really understand um uh, i didn't really see uh what all the fuss was about it was um a movie where not a lot happens it's just about this dude uh who becomes some kind of vigilante and uh mm -hmm. He might be a little deranged, and uh, yeah, yeah, it was, um, and that was about it. So um, I don't know. Uh, um, I, I didn't really um, vibe with uh, all that. Uh, one of my friends at the time, who was a huge cinema uh, buff, told me that the most important scene in the movie is when he puts a, a, an aspirin in a glass of water and that uh, summed up perfectly uh, the movie's relation uh, with uh, time and uh, how things pass. And uh, if I didn't understand this scene, then I didn't understand the movie. Uh, mm. So I, maybe I didn't just, maybe I just didn't get it. I don't know. It, it was your your friend sounds like maybe kind of a like a film study snob, like really yeah. into symbolism and all that bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And since I'm not into that, I figured that's why I I didn't uh, see what the, the interest of the movie was about. Uh, I thought that you probably kind of have to be this kind of person to like it. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of films from the seventies and eighties. Like, it was a really hot period for a while where films, you know, high art films needed to explore the ins and outs of the psychology of some disturbed individual who's at odds with society. And I, I really like a lot of those films. I like Raging Bull. I like Taxi Driver. There's actually another Robert De Niro film from the same era called The King of Comedy. And Robert De Niro is in this film playing um, a late night talk show host that the Joker is kind of obsessed with. Hopefully that's not given too much away for anybody who hasn't seen it. Um, but in The King of Comedy, Robert De Niro plays a deranged guy who's obsessed with a late night talk show host. So he's kind of switched roles in The Joker. So I actually really like that whole era of movies and, um, you know, kind of the the story isn't so much about the plot it's about getting into the meat of somebody's mind so i thought the joker was really unique and different in that way that it's it's not about the comic at all it's about the backstory of how somebody goes from being like a fairly regular messed up dude to wanting to be a a uh, psychotic criminal who laughs while he's you know wreaking havoc and killing people. So I thought I thought it I thought it, it it took the premise of the comic book character and went a lot deeper. So film wise I thought it was interesting and uh like like it was like a lot of movies these days that are really popular don't really try to use symbolism at all and don't even try to 
explore any psychology. So I thought that was really cool. And, um, you know, I, I like my main motivation wanting to see it was was all of this uh, fear that it's like politically irresponsible and that it's going to make people believe the wrong things and it's going to make people want to be violent and all that. So I wanted to see what it was actually about. And I, I had low expectations, but I was surprised that, um, you know, I, I, I majored in film in college. So from like a film major's point of view, it's actually just a really good movie on top of, um, you know, all the, all the social and political shit that people have been saying on the internet. Yeah, apparently I've seen a lot of people say that it was a uh, very left wing and against capitalism. Apparently, uh, it's very left wing and also not very left wing in that it's not it's not the most politically correct. It does if if you're looking at it through the lens of what kinds of agendas does it support and what kinds of agendas is it against. Um, it's it's sort of you could see see it as justifying violence but i don't think it's trying to justify anything it's just telling the story of this dude who's frustrated because he's at the bottom of the heap socially um he's he's really weird he's got a lot of emotional issues and he's just trying to figure out some kind of way to be okay and one thing leads to another um but it, like it does you know, because it's about him being poor, yeah, it is kind of about, you know, classism and economic inequality. Like, it, it touches yeah. on that, but I don't think it's trying to be about anything, you know, other than this guy and what he's going through. Okay. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, do you yeah. do you like uh, DC or uh, Marvel movies uh, a lot? Or was that uh, a one-time uh, experience for you? Um, I've seen a lot of them, but really for me, it's because, because I studied film in school, like I've been trained to just watch any movie and uh -huh. just, just, you know, take a look at what it's doing or what it's not doing. Like I can, I can sit down in front of almost any movie yeah. and appreciate something about it, whether it's the, the visual effects or the acting or the writing you know, um, I don't I don't gravitate towards comic book movies, but I have ended up seeing a lot of them just because other people are interested and I want to see like what's going on with them, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Uh, so what's your favorite type of movie? Um, let's see. Uh, favorite type of movie. Um. Man, there's just so many movies out there. Why well, can't well, I flip it around you, on you? What's your What's your you favorite? Type of movie? <laughs> I knew that you were going to say that. Yeah, you don't have to be ah. one type, but um, I probably comedy. I watched a lot of comedies. Uh, I love um, humor and jokes and all that shit. So um, yeah, it's probably my favorite uh, type. I also like science fiction. Uh, although I'm I'm quite picky about it, um, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, that's most of the movies uh, that are my favorite ones are either comedy or or science fiction. There's a few exceptions, but uh, basically that's it. Comedy and sci-fi. Yeah. Is there an ultimate sci-fi comedy for you? Um, not in movie form, no. Uh, the ultimate sci-fi comedy, in my opinion, is the um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Uh, mm -hmm. gr great, um, great movie. Uh, great. Uh, uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, it's uh, it's a trilogy. It's a trilogy, but it's five books. Um, how he, do they do that? How do they even make five books into three movies? That's ridiculous. I I don't I I um <clears throat> I was just talking about the books. Uh, oh, okay. There's been one movie uh a, a few years ago, but it was really not good, and it was really not true to the book, so I didn't appreciate it. Uh, no, it's just that it's five books, but the author called it a trilogy. Uh, because oh. 
Oh, okay. Okay, I thought you meant like there had been five books and they'd turn those into three movies. And I was like being fake angry about that. But <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the author published uh, five books in total, but he called it a trilogy. It, it's, uh, he said it's a trilogy in five books. So that's that kind of, you know, that's the, the kind of humor uh, that um, the whole book uh, is uh, is crafted around. Um, okay. You've probably heard the quote uh, that is the first sentence of the first book. That is, uh, in the beginning, the universe was created. Uh, it was. It made a lot of people angry and was widely regarded as a bad move. Mm, mm-hmm. Probably heard it. Yeah, and uh, that's yeah, the, that's the right. first sentence. Of, that's the first sentence of the book. Of the first, yeah. One. People were really into it when I was in high school. I just never. If too many people around me are into the same thing, I won't check it out. Okay, uh, you know. Yeah, I used to be like that, uh, and um, I, I stopped quite recently. But uh, I totally see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I uh, yeah yeah I um. <clears throat> I remember the last thing uh, was Breaking Bad. I, I saw everyone, uh, I saw too many people say that Breaking mm. Bad was so good and that put me off um, yeah. the, the, the show. And um, finally, saw someone uh, made me watch the, few, the, few, the first few episodes and I, I was like instant crush. I absolutely loved it. So mm-hmm. since since then that was in 2013 and so since then I, I I stopped doing that but I I was I was really into that kind of bandwagoning for a long time. Yeah, the anti-bandwagon. Yeah. Uh no, that's that's uh bandwagon that's what bang, bandwagon means. It's uh What? Yeah, a bandwagon um, if if I understand the term correctly, may, I may be wrong, but that's how uh, that's how I always uh, heard it being used. Is that um, the, the bandwagon people are the, are the people who really like uh, things that are obscure and that are not mainstream. And when these things, like let's say they like a, a band that has like fifty fans, it's really obscure and small, and suddenly the band becomes famous, so they stop listening to it. Because it's not mm. because it's become popular and mainstream. Um, I, I thought that that was what bandwagon meant. Really? Least... No, I've always heard it the exact opposite of that. That when like something's really popular and you're uh, like other people are getting into it, then they're hopping on the bandwagon. Like like the, you're, when you're hopping on the bandwagon, you're getting with what's popular. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. That's uh, have you have you have you googled this just now? Or are we going to get to the bottom of the truth? Yep, exactly. Okay, uh, I heard your I heard your keys like doing the work <laughs> in the background there. So, yep. um, I want to know. Uh, uh, the definition of a bandwagon is a wagon which carries a bond during the course of a parade, circus, or other entertainment event. The phrase jump on the bandwagon first appeared in American politics in 1948, when Dan Rice, a famous and popular circus clown of the time, so it's, uh, it, it comes back to the Joker, it's, uh, it's, everything's connected. Mm. <laughs> so, uh. pop, a famous and popular circus clown of the time used his bandwagon and its music to gain attention for his political campaign appearances. As his mm. campaign became more successful, other politicians strove for a seat on the bandwagon, hoping to be associated with his success. Later, during the time of William Jennings Bryan's 1900 presidential campaign, bandwagons had become standard in campaigns, and the phrase jump on the bandwagon was used as a derogatory term, implying that people were associating themselves with success without considering that with which they associated themselves. So you were right, uh, mm. and I had understood it completely wrong. Urban Dictionary mm-hmm. Stop Definition says bandwagon is taking interest in something just to fit in with the crowd. Mm. 
So yeah. Yeah. Well, may, I don't. I mean, I'm open. Maybe maybe other people are using this term in different ways. Maybe maybe they're they're using it that way in Europe. Some of the folks you hang out with, I don't know. Uh, so I don't know. If, like once once terms are created, we can just kind of fuck off and do whatever with yeah. them. We can. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially we can, in, yeah. We can make me, things mean the opposite of what they even actually mean. Literally, for example. Um, literally, figuratively, <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, yeah, especially in so English, wait, so, and there's, uh, no, there's no academia, and uh, it's a uh, 100% descriptivist language. Yeah, that's what I love about um, this language. So this was a so the bandwagon was pop, was popularized by a clown that was running for office. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's that's awesome and weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, I like as it's always uh, surprising. You know, look, I, that's why I, I look shit up all the time. Because there's always yeah. some something interesting or funny to learn about pretty much anything. You know, if we hadn't talked about this right now, this would that question would be a, a great basis for a quiz show question. If when you do another oh, quiz yeah. show edition yeah, of this yeah, podcast, yeah, yeah. like you know, the term bandwagon was popularized <laughs> by a clown that was running for office. <laughs> um, Speaking of Joker again, do you think that you're getting any more views from the FBI since you posted a Joker picture on um, <laughs> on your meme page? I doubt it, but uh, a view is a view. <laughs> you know, <laughs> always good. A view is a view. A view, is a view. I mean, uh, that's not true because I always try to uh, be like authentic and true to myself, so I wouldn't attract uh, people who were like. Um, too different, and that wouldn't get uh, the, mm. the 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 kind of humor that I usually peddle. Um, right. You know, the, and you know the normies. Not because I don't want uh, different people to to like my stuff, but it's just that um, you know how people are, uh, especially on Facebook. So much shit gets reported uh, because mm -hmm. it's uh, like uh, because some people find it offensive. That you you gotta you have to filter uh, who you talk to because there's just uh, there's just too many fucking snitches uh, uh, around and Facebook uh, enables that a lot with their mm -hmm. uh, with their oppressive moderation policies. So um, yeah, since there's no accountability and uh, uh, that's that's really what the thing I hate about Facebook because Facebook otherwise is a pretty great platform uh, that really um, and and enables and empowers uh, small creators to become big and uh, to, to really uh, reach a lot of audience. They help you. They push you a lot. They suggest your, your page or your work to uh, a lot of people and uh, really to have organic growth, what we call organic growth in the business. Uh, Facebook is like the, the, the king of that, the best. Really, really great to, uh, to build yourself some exposure um just organically but yeah the worst thing about it is it's moderation like there it's uh it's really kind of like a police state um there the facebook moderators are really zealous and um you know trigger happy which would not be such a big problem if they were accountable like for mm -hmm. example for, for example on reddit uh, which is not a perfect website and not better than Facebook, but they have this thing where the name of the moderators are known, and if you mm. catch a moderator abusing their power, uh, you can tell the Reddit admins with uh, evidence what happened, and the moderator can be demoted and uh, lose his or her, um, you know, status and function as a, mm -hmm. as a moderator and that would be great uh, if it was implemented on facebook because right now we don't know who moderates how why and uh the fact that it's just um it's just faceless nameless people like ghosts or robots um that's really not good that's really uh the biggest in my opinion facebook's the biggest problem 
Right. So when you're putting out your work, you don't you don't want to be backed into the situation where you changed your voice just to become more popular for the sake of being popular. But then you became popular with all these people that you then have to worry about handling them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not it's not just that, but that's a big part of it, Um, because, you know, there is also the fact that um, the the community building and engagement is something that has always been really important to me. That's always been the most important uh, thing to, uh, to me. And that's why I'm trying my best to build uh, a community of uh, not super tight knit, you know, but still coherent. And um, I don't really have, uh, I mean, the best way to do this is just to be yourself because you, you're going to attract. People who are like-minded, uh, in, in uh, you know, it, they're not you know extremely similar, but just enough to have a an identity. You know, identity. Uh, I, I talked about it uh, quite a long time ago. The first video, uh, I think of my new. Oh no, it was in my video uh, that I made for my thirty-first uh, birthday. Um, identity is really important. Identity comes from the the, the same. Root as identical identity is what we have in common uh, with with other people. Uh, uh, it's mm-hmm. uh, recently there's so much shit about like being unique and being special and being not like the others uh, that has been huge for uh, the the past couple decades. And uh, I fucking hate that. I think it's uh, mm-hmm. it's pretentious. It's vain. It's vacuous. I don't believe in any mm-hmm. of that shit. I believe in. Uh, I don't believe everyone, I believe that nobody is unique and nobody is special. And, uh, you know, it's much better at every level to see what you have in common with other people rather than seeing what you have uh, that makes you different or or special or uh, whatever bullshit people believe. Yeah, we're, I, th- I, I see us all as, as unique, uh, like reformations of redundant stuff like there's nothing new under the sun but humans are interesting because we're all different um like what how do you say like we're all we're all different amalgamations of the same shit so that's that's neat but yeah i think i think focusing on the similarities rather than the differences is uh you know um that yeah that is what builds connection and your um your page has really lent me a personality i've been a long time follower of you on <laughs> facebook and uh i just like i immediately was like wow this person is is posting pretty much everything that he posts like i can relate to and then i share it and then that helps my friends kind of come out of the woodwork of you know people that i know wanting to talk to me and opening up conversations with me because they also get it. So it's like, we're all just kind of radiating like this, the same sense of humor and, and facts that we're interested in the same chain from like you finding it interesting, me finding it interesting, my friends really finding it interesting. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's unique because it is the same. Yeah. Uh, I get what you mean. Uh, so it's a network. So, the web, it's a web. That's, uh, it's a web. It's literally a web. Yeah. <laughs> and we were all uh, an intersection or a point in the web. Yeah. I was, um, I was hanging out this weekend with my friend Angus Oblong in Los Angeles, who wanted me to mention his name on this podcast. He's really excited when I'm on a podcast. So I was hanging out with my friend Angus Oblong, creator of the Oblongs um in los angeles and he he says something really wise that i i always keep with me he says everybody's different but i am the same (laughs) yeah reminds me of total recall i love that movie it's so underrated you've seen it oh total recall what what is it about um well it's about um a guy who uh works in uh, some kind of mine and um, he sees an advert on TV um, about, you know, memories that get implanted uh, right into your brain. So uh, you can have a, 
like a fake vacation yet that you you have all the memories of but without having to you know actually travel or take uh, some time off so uh sounds a lot cheaper yeah yeah so he goes uh, to the business uh, that does uh these uh, brain uh, memory implants and uh, mm-hmm. things don't go quite as planned or do they there's a uh, the the the, <laughs> the ending is kind of intentionally ambiguous uh, you don't really know what uh what happened and uh, you can just choose uh, to uh, decide you know uh, whatever the ending means to you and uh, mm-hmm. and yeah uh, when the when the dude uh, is uh, at the at the you know implant vacation um uh, store um the he he has a discussion with a with a seller with a vendor uh that says to him uh, what did all the vacations that you had in your life in common they all had something in common and it's you mm. and uh so uh when you when you you get the implant uh you can be some you you can be someone else so it's uh it's not just a vacation it's a vacation away from yourself you can be whatever you mm. want a movie star secret agent whatever you know and um it sounds dope um apparently it was one of the most expensive films ever made at the time of its release oh huh. interesting yeah, at the budget of 50 to 65 million. Sounds like they're not totally sure what the budget was. But uh and it then it made 261 million. So that's a pr- that's a pretty good return on an investment. Mm. Um No, I had never seen it and I also haven't seen the Colin Farrell uh version either and I was I was that's the poster I was remembering in my head, but um no, I haven't seen it. You 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 super duper recommend? Uh, I haven't seen the remake, and I heard it was bad. But mm-hmm. the the original, I absolutely recommend it. I love it. It's one of my favorite movies. Okay, well, it says I think it looks like it's on Hulu, which I have a subscription for. So maybe I'll check it out on Hulu. Nice. Are you gonna give me? Can you should give me like a list of? I don't know. I'm I'm definitely I've definitely put way too much thought in the into the idea of being on a podcast because I kind of live under a rock. Um, but like I want a like when you start a class in school and they give you a reading list of like books you need to read before the class. I'm like, what kinds of what kinds of stuff is Nelson going to want to talk about? Like, what kinds of movies should I watch? <laughs> what kinds of <laughs> things do I need to be familiar with? But you are. I think it's going to be okay. You are <laughs> overthinking this so much. I know, I know. Like it really, got, it really does not matter. We, we, should I slap myself? Like, can you hear it on the mic? If like I slap, smack, <laughs> smack it out of myself. Like, that's maybe. It. Can you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> I just smacked it out of myself. <laughs> maybe a bit too kinky for a first appearance, but I let it slide. Um, okay, you you can well if if it sounds weird, you can just edit it out. That's the beauty of this. You also reminded me of that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, I don't think I will. Um okay, keep it. Keep it in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I you dare know, you. It's uh it's uh it's character introduction where you, the pe- mm-hmm. the people will get who you are and um uh, have a sense of your personality. Uh it's better that it happens like this through conversation rather than uh, mm-hmm. just uh, monologuing about yourself or whatever. Um Yeah. Um what uh, uh shit i wanted to i wanted to say something and it just slipped my mind um do do you have a a favorite movie like um, oh yeah you were going back to like what kinds of movies do i like and stuff okay so for years so yeah i'm i was a film major i was actually a film major in high school before i went to college uh i don't know what you refer to it as over there over on the other side of the pond uh (laughs) on the other side of the pond and the other side of the channel from the from the other english-speaking yeah place over there does does literally everybody in does does almost everybody in france speak english uh 
more and more it's uh it's becoming really common um, yeah yeah i I don't have any official statistics, but um the majority of people I've uh met lately were pretty much uh, all fluent in english yeah yeah the 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 urban legend in in the u s when we're talking about where we want to travel and we're afraid of going places where we can't communicate in English because we are taught no other languages in school here. Um, yeah, that's weird. Or at least, you know, at least not, at least not much of any other languages. That's weird. So the urban, <laughs> that's strange. the, the urban, tra- the, I know, right. The urban travel legend about France is that uh, everybody can speak English, but they hate you assuming that they can speak English. So you're supposed to try your best in like whatever, like, dollop of of french words and phrases you're going to remember like really really try to communicate and then they'll be nice and switch into english but if you just go up and start speaking in english they'll resent you for it i mean yeah that's fucking rude of course they would resent you for it anyone would do that i mean you come to a, a foreign country and you start speaking in your own language that's rude as fuck uh, every, uh-huh. every anyone would resent you for doing that but uh, according to my experience the uh the Americans are kind of the the, the 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 least offenders of that kind of thing, and uh, I used to work um, in a very uh, tourist-ridden um, area. Infested? Was it tourist infested? Would you say infested? Yeah, I would. So, <laughs> Tur- and, uh, tourists are a, a pest. <laughs> kind of, yeah. I would say more a vermin than a pest, but. Uh, Yes, uh, really subtle nuance. Uh, and yeah, there was mm-hmm. there was uh, in that area like I was a uh, cashier uh, in uh, some kind of upscale fast food that served uh, vegetarian, organic uh, burgers and shit. And um, Ew. really, uh, tourists uh, were there all the time. I think probably our our biggest clients. Uh, inter- were more tourists than, than locals. Uh, and um, I saw on a daily basis a lot of tourists from all around the world, a lot of Japanese, a lot of Koreans, people from all over Europe, and, uh, you know, Americans, of course. And the Americans were usually the nicest and uh, the mm. most well-behaved. And they always asked you, do you speak English? And uh, if you answer yes, they'll start talking to you in English. But, uh, you know, they were really, really not rude and really nice as a general rule. Wow, that's great. Well, extra extra points for Americans then. Um, yeah, that's good. I, at least the tourists. I, I hear I I hear awful things about us. So, you know. I don't know. I mean, I try to I try to be a good person, whether whether I'm uh, in another country or not. So, but Poser. I don't know. There's I mean, there's there's also a lot of awful Americans here, but I don't know how much they travel. <laughs> 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 or like they're stuck here because yeah. nothing works out in their lives. Yeah, I I heard uh, that uh, less than the half of Americans have a passport. That was uh, really surprising, and mm. um, it's kind of a shocking statistic because. Uh, Especially since here, uh, traveling abroad is like the national sport. Everyone does it all the time, and uh, mm-hmm. it's like it's one uh, one of the, the, the people's biggest hobby uh, or leisure, or I don't know what you want to call it. But you know, uh, it's um, it it would be hard to find someone without a passport. Uh, but um, yeah, that's. Uh, Kind yeah, of a, kind of a culture shock when I read that. Yeah, we're 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 a funny bunch down here for sure, Americans. Um, you know, but I mean, I am American, but like from my perspective of like how the rest of the world operates, like Americans are like particularly funny. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Yeah, but I started going there asking about um, what you call like how you think of. Okay, so we, we yeah, high school here, so we. Uh, I went to a boarding school for high school and it was, you got to pick an arts major there. It was like an arts high school. Mm -hmm. And so I was a film major and 
So I watched a lot of films when I was a high school film major, and then I watched a lot of more films when I was a college film major, specifically screenwriting. Uh And uh, yeah, I out of out of all that big volume of films that I watched from all these different eras, um, genre wise, I came to really love Bollywood movies like a lot. Uh Um, I have a really, really weird fascination with Bollywood because I don't quite love them ironically, but I also, I also don't take them seriously unironically. And I think even the movie themselves know how silly they are. And I just, I love, I love that kind of the merger of, of serious and silly and like authentic joy, but also not taking itself seriously and like knowing that it's a joke while it's being a joke yeah, um, yeah, yeah. so uh, I, I, I really really love bollywood films i didn't uh, i haven't seen a lot of them but uh yeah it was al- always a uh, quite to the experience did you see that movie called entiran uh with uh yeah what did you see that movie the bo- uh, there's a bollywood movie that's called entiran uh, it's about a guy. Ga- Entiran. Yeah, it's about um, mm. a scientist who, uh, uh, who creates um, a janitor or robot. Uh, not very, not a janitor, but like a factotum, um, like a butler, or a, you know, he cooks, he does the dishes, he cleans their house, and uh, it's a great robot. But uh, um, he, I don't remember. I think he tries to offer it. To a girl he's interested in, um, but um, the girl doesn't like the robot, so he destroys it. But uh, he fails to do, to destroy it, and um, the some some people from uh, the the army uh, find it and uh, turn it into a war robot. But uh, he he, be- mm-hmm. he becomes too powerful, so he starts killing everyone. Wow. Yeah, it was sounds really intense. Yeah, yeah, it was a really great movie. Uh kinda like a blend between Matrix, Transformers, and um a lot of a lot of dancing at random times. Is that the one where he has lots and lots of arms? Um at some point. Uh, maybe. Uh and oh, it like yeah. maybe came out like ten to fifteen years ago. Yes. That's about yeah, it. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. I didn't see it in the theater, but I saw it. Um, somebody had downloaded it from the internet, and I watched it. Yeah, there, there's there's a lot of super creative plots all over Bollywood movies. Like, I've never I've never seen a Bollywood movie with a repetitive plot. And, and the plot can completely shift in the middle when they have the intermission. Which if you see it in, a, in an all-Bollywood theater, they'll actually, like, let everybody leave and, like, go out in the lobby for the intermission. And you buy samosas and all that great stuff. And, uh, and then the second half of the movie can be completely different from the first half of the movie, mm-hmm. which I, I yeah. love because movies, movies can get really boring. And like that part where the action's kind of winding down and you sort of know like what's going to happen, like, oh, okay, the good guy is going to win at some point. So it's a lot more fun if like the whole tone and objective of the movie changes. Yeah. In really, the middle of really, that. really true. Yeah. 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 So many, so many predictable so. plots. Um, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. That's that's a thing I really loved about the, about the movie, and uh, this one is like it's really like that. It starts as some kind of weird um, romantic comedy, and then in the middle, suddenly it becomes some kind of action movie uh, mm-hmm. with uh, a lot of explosions and shit. Um, that's exactly that's exactly this, yeah. And, uh, Life is too short to have a movie be the same all the way through it. Fuck you gotta yeah. just. Fuck it up, like take take the two halves of different movies and, and turn it into a cat dog or a liger <laughs> or a you know goat raccoon or something. Just like just take take two you know four legged animals and like just splice it together and make something new out of it. That's how movies should be to me. Yeah. Um. But oh, yeah. Were you gonna say something? No, no I was. I just said yes. I I agreed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so aside from Bollywood, uh, I 
I wa like watched a lot of older m movies that are supposed to be good um, for for film history purposes. And my favorite classic movie is Sunset Boulevard. Because have you have you ever seen it? Well, uh, what's what's the name? Sunset Boulevard. It's from 1951. Mm, never, I think. Heard, never heard of it. I love it. Um, it's just every single scene is super tight and will really well written like those those original hollywood screenwriters all came out of doing radio uh -huh. and theater so there was there wasn't a lot of room for just writing a bunch of pointless verbal drivel yeah. like everything had to be really tight and fit together and and make sense and it's a story of a silent movie actress who lives alone in her own house and her butler kind of plays in this delusion that she's still super famous, even though everybody's forgotten about her. Uh -huh. And uh, like a more modern screenwriter shows up at her door. It's a movie about the movies. So this, this okay. screenwriter shows up at her door because he's like trying to outrun the guy, like the repo men trying to take away his car. So he like lives there and kind of gets wrapped up in her sick little world. Um, so yeah, I like that movie a lot. Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, have you seen yeah. Adaptation with Nicolas Cage? Yeah. It's kind of yeah, was... like that. That was really good. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. really excellent. Yeah. Yeah, but I like I like movies about about the movies. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, because... And that, that, like, that's something that makes me really excited about internet culture is, like, it's a culture that breaks down other culture and especially memes. Yeah. Like, we... Like, like I was raised on watching TV and I felt really owned by the TV. I mm. felt I, like my life goal was to be in the media because I thought that, um, wow, like, like all the, all these ideas are like entering my brain without my permission for me watching all this <laughs> TV. Um, like I, I want to, you know, body image wise, like I want to look like these like super pretty women that like, I know I'm never going to you know, be exactly like them. And, um, you know, all the, all the, all the stories are the same, all like these family styles that they're depicting are the same. And like, I want to be a part of all of it so I can, you know, kind of mess up, you know, mess everything up and, and, you know, make people see stuff that's like actually psychologically helpful or relatable or something. Yeah. But now that, yeah, now that we're all participating in internet culture and making our own media like that, it's kind of irrelevant. We're all sort of doing that together. We're all deconstructing all of our symbols and narratives and it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, uh, it's really great. Uh, some do it better than others. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's, there's been some people, I, I especially think about filthy Frank, uh, who, who was really into that, like 110%. And, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it can be pretty great, but, uh, the, the best thing is that, People don't, don't even really try um, to deconstruct. That's just what happens. Yes. Oh, kind of yes. automatically. Like, uh, it's not really, uh, for, for most people, it's kind of even, like, unconscious. Um, yes. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's rarely the intent. It's more like the result of what we do. I, yeah, it's just it's just a product of the collective mega mind, and this is just the pinnacle of society becoming self self. We do live in a society, and it's becoming <laughs> sentient of itself, <laughs> and it's it's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I really like that guy Tony Zaret. Are you ever going to do an episode with him? I invited him like ten times, and he never answered. <sighs> oh man, I just love how he roasts instagram yeah constantly yeah he does he doesn't have time for you he's not responding to your stuff if a few times he answered me like when i mm -hmm. talked about different things but every time i invited him to my podcast he, he didn't answer i'm not sure why he just goes ghosts the question wow yeah. yeah yeah wow it's like getting ghosted by a thick girl <laughs> 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 yeah kind of <laughs> I love you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's really, he's really great. So, um, 
I don't, I don't mind. Um, I prefer when people, you know, refuse politely, which has happened a few times. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, yeah, it's, it's never nice being ghosted. Uh, I, I, Whatever. I don't, I don't really know. I, I discovered recently that he has his own podcast, um, mm-hmm. and uh, maybe that's why he didn't want to. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I, I, I asked, I asked a lot of people. Um, yeah. So it's it's hard even to to remember everyone that I've invited, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, pretty much the admins of every big meme page on Facebook uh, and a bunch of creators that I like from like Instagram or YouTube or whatever. Um, yeah, that's okay. Well, there you know everybody every kind of is a celebrity these days like i there's there's tiers of people that i don't have time to really have a conversation with yeah and i'm just a regular internet user who's like you know sometimes interesting and then you're you know somebody with half a million page followers Mm -hmm. and then so like there's there's like there's certain people that get to kind of have access to you and then there's the people with millions of of internet followers and they get all that much more um traffic and attention and people trying to get demands of their time so we're all we're all just it's like in you know anything about mormonism about what mormonism the mormon religion ah okay yeah yeah so in in mormonism when you die like uh allegedly everybody gets their own planet or the men all the men get their own planet that their wives and children really live on with them (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's funny yeah so so we're all it's like we're all just gods of our own planet and some planets are bigger than others and just command a, a bigger orbit with a lot of other planets <laughs> around them <laughs> that that's funny so. don't you don't you get lonely though if you have your own planet that's that's a weird thought no, all of your wives and children are on the planet with you. So, like, before before Mormonism had some sort of uh, revelation that no longer, um, you know, no longer can you have multiple wives. Like, a man could have as many wives on his planet with him when he died as he was able to marry um, in the in the in the Earth realm. <laughs> So the more the more wives the more wives you marry in original Mormonism, the more company you have on your planet when you die so that's strange uh because if you were on your planet with your wives and children they it means they don't get their own planet how does it work uh i mean you know i've never been mormon um certainly i've never been a mormon man and i never will be but um i'm thinking this is like me just purely extrapolating on logic that uh, if your children, you know, get married and have planets of their own, you know, then they then they get their own, like maybe next door planet. Maybe you can hop over and visit one another's planets if you got like you know your sons nearby. Huh. Um, but if you if your kids like don't get married off, then they just stay on the planet with you. It's like it's like the eternity of never leaving mom and dad's house. Yeah, it's kind of like <clears throat> Minecraft. Is it, do they ha- get their own planets in Minecraft? Yeah, technically, uh, the, everyone has uh, their own world, but uh, the the size is infinite, and they're all interconnected. Um, I, I think I haven't played Minecraft in so many years, but uh, I, I, I seem to remember that that's kind of how it works. Okay, new conspiracy theory. Minecraft was invented by Mormons to get kids adjusted to the idea of a super fun world of having their own planet so that they'll be more excited to stay in Mormonism through uh, through their death. Yeah, that's, uh, that sounds legit. Um, yeah. What, what uh, are, are the Mormons, the, those people who refuse to use technology, no um oh my gosh so there's so many fun new religions here that have been started (laughs) that have been started in the u.s i grew up i grew up in transcendental meditation um which is like uh from the upfront it just looks like a meditation technique but at least in in the 90s when 
when I was growing up, there was there was a lot of uh like a, like a big society around it. Like you you join Transcendental Meditation and then they want you to live live in Fairfield, Iowa, which is where I grew up, and have your house built in a certain way and wear certain colors of clothes and eat a certain diet and <laughs> all this fun stuff. America is just, just totally full of like all of these little new religions of like people feel really empowered that they can they can start their own thing and have their own followers. Um, so there's so many of them here, but probably the most famous are... Um, you might be thinking of the Amish. They they use no technology, uh, um, and yeah. then uh, that yeah they they you know like when they migrated over from Europe, they just decided they weren't going to evolve with modern times. They were going to um, do everything old school. Pull, you know, not use electricity. Um, use use mules to pull the you know. Uh, whatever farming equipment around yeah. and um yeah wear old timey clothes and speak speak german <laughs> um that's weird and then uh yeah mormonism they live modern lifestyles but they you know they they're they're known for having polygamy at one time which the mainstream mormon church doesn't do anymore and then they also don't have caffeine like all drugs including caffeine are they're limited from um that's sad yeah Lots of weird roles. And then Scientology is also really famous, but that's um, that was started in the 50s around um, some sci-fi novel concepts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, di I didn't know he was that old, but uh, yeah, R Ron, Ron Hubbard, the creator of Dianetics, is that it? Dianetics, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're everywhere. I uh, I don't know if you saw, but I got a I got an advert from the French Church of Scientology in my mailbox a few weeks ago. Ooh, ooh, are you gonna go? <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you gonna get your free personality test? Is that what they offered you? They that's what they do here. They offer people a free personality test to like as their their taster to get in there. Uh, no, they did offer some kind of business networking seminar. Ooh. So uh yeah, it was it was a conference about business and networking. That's that was the thing. And uh, you know, uh if you turn the leaflet uh, on, on its verso, uh, it was you know, say the uh, it was written Church of Scientology and all that shit. So that, that was weird. When is it when is it? Are you gonna go? No, I, I don't think I'm gonna go. And it it was a, uh, I, I I think it was in uh, to July or uh, yeah, it was a bunch uh, was, was a bunch of week a bunch of weeks ago. Bunch of bunch of weeks ago, even months. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but that would be good material for the podcast if you went to a Scientology event and you came back and talked about it. Really? Do you really think? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> What kind of just ruin ruin your life for 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 material? <laughs> I think that would be great. <laughs> Anything for views? Yeah, I mean, they, if you don't bring your credit card, they can't take your credit card info from you. So just remember that. That's fair. Um, yeah. I mean, they could probably steal my mobile phone and then use Google Pay. Uh, but but Ooh. no, it's uh, to pay themselves for your courses. Yeah, it's uh, it's protected by a fingerprint. Uh, but you know, what if they cut my hand? They could, or or just or just like literally force you to press it. I would say don't bring your phone to avoid that from happening. But if it becomes really freaky and dangerous, you might want to have your phone yeah. <laughs> on you. <laughs> um, now, apparent, apparently they're really, really nice at first. And then at a certain point where you've taken a certain number of low cost or free seminars and classes, then they corner you in this room and then and just just kind of keep hounding you like you're your your money your credit score all of that stuff in this lifetime doesn't matter you really need to pay us up front a quarter mil of a million dollars for yeah. 
um, the rest of your courses here, and they just they just keep psychologically battering you until you do it, and they're really aggressive, and they they make you really afraid to not um, to not commit to them. Yeah, that's, so. not, that's not surprising. That's that's mm-hmm. basically what I imagined. Uh, uh, I guess uh, trying to go there uh, wouldn't hurt, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I think I'll, I think I'll pass. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I'm 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 definitely the type to just egg people on into things that like I don't I don't necessarily like want them to do it, but I'm just like having fun like making the case for doing something really stupid. Yeah. So <laughs> Yeah, don't 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 t- never please never take me seriously. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so uh Mormons are the ones who have several wives. Amish are the or ones. Or used to, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. What 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 mm-hmm. do they have now? Okay. Um. So the official Mormon church, which is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, had some revelation <laughs> some years ago. Like, they always have a re- revelation when it's politically convenient. Um, uh. But they had a revelation some years ago that, that God doesn't want them to do polygamy anymore. So now they just do all of their other stuff without the polygamy. And, uh, but they're still, there's, there's a huge shoot off of, um, Mormons that come, come from like long lines of Mormons. Cause this has been going on here since the 1800s. And so those people still practice polygamy. Like they get religiously married, but they're not legally married. Huh. Um, because they were like, oh, the Mormon church just made up a fake revelation to avoid, um, you know, the government um, busting us up for polygamy. So there's there's still there's still like a lot of sects, a lot of groups of Mormons that still do polygamy, but they're not they're not associated with the official Mormon church. And what uh, do the others do? What uh... the Amish? No, the Mormons, or... the, the Mormons who don't do polygamy. What do they do instead? Okay, yeah, the more yeah, the what do they do instead? Um they have they have uh you know, one man, one woman marriage. They still they don't really believe in birth control, so they still have a lot of kids. Uh-huh. They just do it with one one man and one woman, lots of kids. Uh-huh. Um they marry pretty young. That when they're teenagers, they select a country that they want to go to on a mission. Um so they they often send kids Overseas, they they learn they the Mormons are the only people learning a foreign language in high school, <laughs> um, so that they can go on these these missions to other countries to spread the word um, in a language that they're unfamiliar with. Okay, and uh, yeah, just try to try to recruit lots of people into Mormonisms. Maybe maybe try to I think missionaries in general try to do nice things for um, heathens like the non-believers to like say see like. Mormons are nice people. Will like help you fix your house or like help give you access to like dr- you know clean drinking water and like come come be part of our religion um, and like all these nice humanitarian things we do. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. it's like so. this. Uh, but that's uh, that, it's like these guys from the atheism subreddit who sent uh, water tanks to some kids in Africa. Uh huh. What was that? What was the um, the catch? Or did they just do that to be nice? Yeah, 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 and uh, what well, <laughs> the the funny stuff about it is that the, the guys did not understand what a subreddit is, so they thought that Reddit R atheism was the name of someone, like R mm. being the you know the middle initials, and they, they thought that Reddit was uh. some guy's first name. <laughs> so uh, they oh, okay they engraved. Uh, the water tank uh, say thanks to Mr. Reddit R atheism for, <laughs> for giving this uh, uh, rainwater collector to uh, our village. Oh, okay, so so these so these atheists from Reddit did a humanitarian thing just to prove that it's not just Christian mini- minister uh, Christian missionaries. Yeah, that will do nice things. Atheists will do nice things too. Yeah, that's good. No, yeah, no. Mormons will do nice things with an agenda to um, recruit more Mormons. Um, and then, what else? Do they, they have lots of kids. They um, they do mission work, and um, 
let's see. Uh, yeah, they get married very young and then start having lots of kids. And um, yeah, they, I don't know. They, they, you got, you got to confess like a lot of the, your secrets to some kind of church elder. Like they really try to get in everybody's minds and make sure everybody's living a super, super moral lifestyle. Like there's not really a lot of room to, um, to be, uh, you know, immoral. They don't want you to masturbate. Um, you know, so basically that kind of stuff. Basically, they're extremely similar to the Catholics. Yeah, it's it's like it's like most it's like a lot of other Christianity or you know Catholic Christianity, except very very intense, closely knit communities that are really watching you uh -huh. all the time. Yeah. Do you have other interesting or funny sects like that? Sex. Um, sex. Let's see. That I have cults, churches. sex. What? Uh, yeah. What well, growing? Yeah, growing up in transcendental meditation was interesting. That's that's the one that I actually was in. Um, but uh, so that's a I don't know. That's I've, a religion. Uh, huh? Tran transcendental meditation. That's uh, that's like a religion or. Uh... Well, I'll tell you this. Anything that you're getting initiated in that really wants to keep repeating to you that it's not a religion. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, it might be a religion. Yeah. Um, no, transcendental meditation is really low key. The weirdest thing about it is that um, like as a child, I was raised to believe that if I went all the way through all of their training courses, I was going to be able to fly someday, <laughs> like literally fly with my body like. Like, like my spirit is so enlightened that it makes my body defy the laws of gravity and lift me up so I can go in the sky. Um, so that was, that was sort of their promise to people. They, so that it was started by, uh, the guru that the Beatles followed when the Beatles went, oh. um, into their, their hippie stage. Yeah. Yeah. So through, through the Beatles being interested in, um, in this guru, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, then a lot of other uh young people of that generation also got interested in it so That's um yeah they 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 did this whole recruitment effort to get them all to move to this town in Iowa where they were going to have these group meditation halls and they promised that if everybody got together and meditated at the same time it would create these world peace generating effects and we would have no more wars anymore after the vietnam war like the war is going to be obliterated because all these meditators are meditating together oh and yeah so i was just raised huh yeah, what yeah yeah i think there was a an episode of xavier renegade angel about this okay i'm not familiar with that what's that uh it's uh oh, it's my favorite show of all time it's really really great um, I think everyone should watch it. It's so brilliant. It's um, basically it, this guy uh, who's kind of a freak, and um, his uh, his parents disappeared in a uh, fuck a fire, and uh, mm -hmm. so uh, he wants to travel the world to find uh, the the arsonist who killed his father. And along the way, he's trying to, you know, learn something, do some good shit, be a, a good Samaritan. But uh, he's so he's, he's, he's so weird and twisted that every time he tries to do some good, it, backs, it backfires like a lot. And uh, mm. either uh, he causes a catastrophe or he just unites everyone around him uh, to the, the, the common goal of beating him senseless. Hmm. It's uh yeah, it's a really great show. It's um it's all CGI, but it's like cheapo CGI and it looks kind of a PlayStation 2 cutscene. Oh. So he goes to some place where everybody's meditating together, doing mass meditation? Um there's one episode where ah, I don't remember um what hap exactly what happened, but yeah, there are monks who uh, are meditating and they record their meditations um, using some kind of machine, and then they they put the meditation in some pills uh, that they send mm. that they send overseas, and if people um, eat the pills, they they get like uh, transcendental and uh, and all that. 
But um, at some point, it's something that goes wrong, and I don't remember exactly what happens in this episode, but I really remember the, the monks uh, meditating, and uh, I think it was like transcendental meditation. Yeah, manufacturing world peace with their meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could have definitely been inspired by uh, by transcendental meditation or similar similar movements. Um, so yeah, that was that was that was really weird to and grow so up being a part of, and then and then growing up, huh? Do they pray to like John Lennon or uh... <laughs> a lot? I mean, individually, not not as like an official stance <laughs> of of transcendental meditation, <laughs> but yeah, I think a lot of people would consider. John Lennon and Guru. Actually, uh, George was the most into it. I think oh. most into the spirituality stuff, and uh -huh. he was um, he 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 was officially a part of the Hare Krishna huh. religion, which is which is kind of part of the um, same era of various spirituality groups of of the seventies. <laughs> yeah, that were really popular in the seventies. Yeah, the seventies were really a dark time. Yeah, yeah. Taxi driver, <laughs> Raging Bull. Well, that was until the eighties. But yeah, that whole that whole late sixties to like mid eighties period, there was a lot of darkness and society trying to rediscover itself and find itself and and yeah. select a new set of values. Yeah, yeah, in very very misguided ways. I call it, I, I call that yeah. the, the hippie dark ages. The hippie dark ages. Yeah. Yeah, you 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 seem pretty um, passionate about that organic thing, like organic organic yeah. stuff being kind of a scam. A lot of like that. A lot of people were talking about that when I was growing up. I was part of the transcendental meditation thing. There were a lot of people that were passionate about being anti-GMO and yeah. uh, like really freaking out that like by this time, like. By by the year two thousand seven, the entire world was going to grow, like blow up in flames because of global warming and uh -huh. all that kind of scary stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's always a bad idea to be like uh, trying to make people panic, and uh, it's a really sort of culture of fear that that I really dislike a lot. And uh, some people are capitalizing on that big time, like Netflix made a bunch of super uh bad documentaries uh that completely uh buy into the all these weird urban legends that Monsanto is bad that uh, uh GMOs are dangerous and all, all that uh, some have been pulled because people complained too much but there are some there are still a few that are still up and uh, that's uh, that's that's kind of a concern uh, the uh the anti-science movement is, uh, is getting pretty big mm -hmm. lately with all the anti-vaxxers, the flat earthers, the mm -hmm. moon truthers, etc. Yeah, is it what? What is it about organic food specifically that like I want? Like I want to know what what pisses you off so much about organic food? Well, there's a lot of things, uh, but yeah, uh, it started uh, some some weeks or months ago. I was. Um, I had a craving for bananas, so I I, mm. I went to the supermarket that is closest to my to my home, and um, they didn't have any regular bananas; they had only organic. And uh, so I went to another supermarket, and same shit. They didn't have any normal bananas; they were they were all organic, and uh, that's what that that's that was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back, you know. Um, huh. it's just, it's such a dumb scam and everybody's, everybody's buying into it. And, um, yeah, it's all this anti-science. I mean, it, French people are, have always been scientifically illiterate. Like, uh, it's, it's pretty bad as a general rule and it's not really getting better. Uh, it's, uh. It's one of the things that I hate the most about this country uh, is that so many people are afraid of science and technology and uh, really don't like that. So you refuse to eat an organic banana? I mean, I refuse. Uh, I try not to. 
and um, I try not to to buy organic stuff because uh, yeah, I, it's it's a scam and it's uh, it's an industry that I don't want to support in any way. But you mm-hmm. know, if at some point someone hands me uh, something that was organic, I I have eaten organic stuff uh, once in a while. Uh, I, I'm not I'm not really afraid of it. But yeah, I try to boycott it as as much as possible, and um, to do to denounce it uh, every time I can. Cause it's yeah, it's just so dumb. It's so dumb. It's such an obvious scam. It's it's and yeah, it's it's the the appeal to nature is one of the the biggest fallacies that are around nowadays. People, some people, for some reason. Than to think that if something is natural, uh, in quotes, then it's it's better, and if something is not natural, then it's bad, and uh, I hate it so much. Nature, nature is not good. Uh, you know, nature made cyanide, mercury, and uh, a, a lot of venomous snakes, a lot of poisons a lot of you know people died in uh, volcanoes and earthquakes and all of that nature is not good and um mm-hmm. uh, yeah it's i'm not sure why but it's really infuriating to me uh when people uh, say that they, they want natural stuff uh, so many people say like yeah oh yeah i buy organic or as uh, our grandparents call it real food uh <laughs> I hate that shit yeah. so much. Mostly, like organic food is real food, and conventional or uh, agriculture is uh, like uh, fake or whatever. So many people would just want just to go back to the past, and uh, for the worst reasons, for the stupidest reasons, people will w- just want to live into a past that they uh, that they put on a, on a mental pedestal you know and they, they really uh idealize it and um everything was worse before than it is today mm-hmm. i mean pretty much everything everything is going down right lately crime is going down pollution is going down uh um stillborns and uh women who die uh during childbirth are, are really going down Everything is everything. Pretty much is getting better and better every year. Uh, but some people refuse to see that, and they would rather go back to a time when uh, you know uh, a, a lot of children died before the age of five, and uh, there was smallpox going around. And uh, mm. you know, I, I I don't get it. We have so many great things thanks thanks to science and and technology and the progress of you know medicine and and all that. I don't understand why why so many people just want to shit on this uh and just uh just want to go go back in time it's, it's weird so so you only want to support the most efficient methods of farming bananas as possible? Uh, well, it's not really about efficiency, although it, of course it matters because if it's more efficient, uh, then you have to use a smaller area of land, which is better for everyone. Um, the, the majority of deforestation occurred to uh, you know grow food. And and that's and that's mm-hmm. that's that's pretty bad, oh. but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, uh, it's just sad that that so many people buy into that shit. Well, because I mean, I like, see personally, like, like I never ordered one, one of your um. I mean, I'm, I'm all about like let's embrace the facts and. I, I guess I'm just not bothered by organic so much because it's just bananas that somebody chose to grow with no pesticides on it, and then they used a like a like a, a like a strain of a banana seed that was developed before, um, you know, a, a, a genetically or like a like a test tube artificially enhanced banana. Of course, we we enhance the genes of things 
purely through deciding, you know, which bananas taste good and breeding those with other bananas that also taste good or like whatever, whatever, whatever methods they use to like fertilize the right, um, you know, plants to make the right banana trees. Um, but I guess I don't, I have, like, I have no problem with eating an organic banana and I don't, I don't associate it with like all of the other just kind of litany of anti-science, anti, anti-modernity that, that it seems to trigger in you. Uh, well, that's weird because it's kind of like at the, at the center of the problem. And, um, it's, uh, it's it's big it's beginning to be to become like so widespread and ubiquitous and uh there's so many organic shops that open everywhere um when you when you want to buy stuff on amazon they they push a lot of this organic bullshit and uh yeah it's uh it's 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 really bad because everything about it is so dumb it's not better for the environment because uh, you said that uh, organic food didn't have pesticides. Of course, it has pesticides. Every agriculture uses pesticides. It's just that the organic ones can only use natural ones and okay. and uh, not synthetic pesticides that were made in a lab. And that is actually oh, okay. So it's just they can only they can only use certain. I mean, everything is chemicals, so they can only use certain chemicals and not other chemicals. <laughs> yes, so every, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, you you and me are chemicals. Everything is chemicals, so yes, they, they still use chemical pesticides. They just don't use synthetic chemical pesticides. Yeah, it has to be pesticides that were cr- extracted from plants, or you know, uh, okay, uh, it, it cannot be molecules that were created in a, in a lab. Um, that's part of their stuff. And of course, it's worse for the environment because these these natural uh, pesticides are not, you know, really refined. So you got to use a lot of them. And uh, they're mm-hmm. not... Because uh, a lot of modern pesticides that were created in, in labs and stuff, they're, they're safer because they were engineered by scientists to, uh, to, to, be, to be safer mm-hmm. and uh, make less collateral damage. And um, you know it's it, it's also not better for the environment because uh, organic farming methods are are uh, you know completely obsolete and uh, really uh, f- from the past. So uh, the yield is much worse. So they have to use mm-hmm. they have to use more land, which means usually yeah. more deforestation and uh, more pesticides being. Uh, everywhere and yeah also- and, th- and, th- and throw out a lot that that does get eaten by pests if the if the organic pesticides are less effective i know that they yeah. have to throw out a lot that is eaten by by bugs and such and so it's really not better for the environment and it's not better for you either uh you know there's been more than 200 studies done in the in the past few years and organic um Fruits and vegetables and and whatever are not healthier in terms of nutrition. They're completely equivalent to uh, the, you know, conventional farming uh, produce, mm-hmm. and uh, they don't have more vitamins or uh, more uh, anything. And also, in my opinion, they tend to taste less good. Than conventional um, fruits and veggies and and whatever else. Mm-hmm. Now here here um, the organic stuff from from what I've tasted the organic stuff does to taste tend to taste a little better because they do have to harvest it riper. Like the non organic can use ripening agents on it, and a lot of our food does get shipped from pretty far away, um, yeah. either from central central California or somewhere in Mexico. Mm-hmm. So the 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 conventionally farmed stuff is picked earlier, less ripe, and then is sort of ripened artificially. Uh-huh. So yeah, if you do if you do just want to if you are just selecting for things that have been been harvested a little fresher, organic tends to be better, but it, it does cost two or three times as much. Yeah, it's insane. It's uh, so there's that what people what people call the Gwyneth Paltrow tax. The Gwyneth Paltrow tax. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah. Because uh, Gwyneth, you, you know Gwyneth Paltrow. She's uh she's like uh, I don't know if she's like this huge uh, 
Machiavellian scammer, or if she really mm-hmm. believes in all that bullshit. But you know, she's a uh, she's one of the uh, of the biggest uh, persons at the top of the anti science movement with all that shit that she peddles, like goop and uh, and all that and the uh, alkalized water and uh, etc. Yeah, I don't know. She she may very well believe in all of it like having having grown up around a lot of these similar types of folks that like a lot of people that were into transcendental meditation come from um you know like a lot of family money and um yeah. never really had to work and so it's just a lot of people that kind of came into this world thinking well i can do pretty much anything you know what do i need what do i want to do and a lot of people that are um you know come from a lot of money are into the idea of uh you know, using using their privilege and using their influence to, um, you know, fight the evils of the world and and combat, um, you know, what what the masses are just kind of forced into doing because because they they don't have any choice. Um, you know, combat that with with sexier marketing and better PR and. Um, you know, supporting what they think is really in the best interests of everybody, but they are so, they also are so disconnected from, um, you know, needing, needing to be a part of the, the, the lower class or middle class economy that they, they, uh, you know, they don't, they don't necessarily know if they're feeding into something that's, uh, doesn't really make sense for, for us regular folks. Yeah. That's, uh, like the first world, problems is that when people's lives are so good that they have to invent uh problems instead of having real ones yeah yeah i think like like i don't know gwyneth paltrow and some other people that have like really dedicated their lives to fighting uh you know fighting fighting genetically modified organisms and etc yeah they just I don't know. They they think they really think that they they can make a difference and that they can help and that that if other people just made the choice to spend more money on their food that they'd be better off. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's weird. I don't know. It's, huh? it's strange. Yeah. Do do you feel like personally annoyed by these people that like you've known personally and does does that come up for you when you're looking at this anti you know, anti-science marketing. Do you just like think of individuals in your life who have been really frustrating and, um, you know, closed off to reason and logic? Fortunately, not. Uh, it's just like like when I walk in my neighborhood, I see a lot of organic shops. Uh, when I shop for groceries, I see a lot of organic shit. Uh, when I go on the internet, I, I see so many people talking about this all the time. And uh, trying to tell you that organic is is better and that GMOs are bad and all this uh, absolute nonsense. And um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's everywhere lately. It's it's all around. Fortunately, I don't really know any people who are really into that. But uh, but yeah, it's um, it's kind of overwhelming. It's it's kind of becoming you know inevitable uh, lately. And uh, and I really really was resent that. Yeah. Well, you know, here we are fighting the good fight, talking about it on the internet. So, you know, yeah, maybe. Oh yeah. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, it's for for me. I kind of have to. Um, like it's both. I sort of have to know where I stand, and also like um, protect how much I let uh, let dumb things get a hold of me. I, I used to be really, really mad about um, just, like, the sheer level of constant bullshit that's going on in, like, in people's minds, in the press, on TV. And, uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's, like, it's not good to just completely stop caring altogether. Um, it's better to like care with a level of, you know, freedom and disconnection from like what other people are doing, you know? Yeah. 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 I, I, I see what you mean. I mean, uh, 
I don't know if it's necessarily that, but um, uh, I mean, on one hand, people can do what they want, uh, and I don't really give a shit if they want if they decide to to buy organic stuff. It's just all the discourse that is around it that is that people keep telling that it's it's the only real food and uh, it's uh, it's better uh, for, for your health or. Uh, you know, it's not just it's not just the fact that they buy it because you know it's their life, it's their money. I don't care. It's just all the evangelization around it and uh, the fact that it's uh, it's becoming really, really inevitable uh, all around. So many, so many organic stores and uh, even in regular supermarkets, so many organic products in every aisle. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Why, I don't know why it pisses me off so much. I'm not sure why, but it, it really does. I guess I I I get pissed off because I associate it with those people who told me that I was going to be able to fly if I meditated enough, and I see that as I see that as really psychologically abusive. Like yeah. going back to you know tell a child, um, if you grow up and pay pay this organization enough money and stay committed to us, you're going to be able to fly. Like. And so, so I, I kind of lump that all in with everything else that's, um, you know, less than truthful, but it's like a, it's an exciting idea in the same way, like organic is going to save the world. It's like, it's less than truthful, but it's a really exciting idea for people. And, um, like all over, all over the place, I, I'm it, like in the memes that I share, I'm kind of committed to like, uh, poking holes in like the casual lies. Yeah. <laughs> of of the world that we uh that we live in because there's so many casual lies like everywhere yeah. from 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 what you see at the grocery store to um you know what like um you know what you like what what you see in uh in advertising like you like like everything smoothed out clothes never crumple like mm -hmm. You know, every every car is driven, you know, through this gorgeous landscape, like with with like a the perfect little gradiated sunset in the background. And like every everything that you see is like trying to get you excited about living in some sort of fantasy world to like connect you with an agenda or a product or like spending money. And um, yeah. yeah, it's it's infuriating on it on a deep level, but it's like it's great to uh you know, connect with other people that are making fun of the same stuff together. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a fair point. That's a fair mm. point. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know why it grinds my gears so much. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really obsessed about what's true and what's not usually. Um, uh, fuck. I don't know. It's just so dumb. Basically, it's just mm -hmm. so dumb. And uh, lately, I've, I've been really sick of all that shit, all that all that hippie new age shit that is making a comeback. Um, like, uh, yeah, the anti vaxxers the flat earthers, the people who uh, are against GMOs and who buy organic bullshit, uh, the the people who take homeopathy. Uh, the people who, um, what else? There's so much, uh, who go to a chiropractor or, or uh, have a, uh, buy into the Chinese medicine bullshit like acupuncture or uh, all that. And, um, with people who are like into astrology and the MBTI. I mean, it's, it's, um, uh, it's a lot. It's, lately it's becoming a lot. Uh, of, of that stuff happening all the time, and uh, I have less and less patience for it every day. Yeah, yeah. I will say you, you just listed off a number of things that if my friends listen to this, they're <laughs> they're gonna get upset with me. I think uh, they're like, "Oh my gosh, Lisa, have you turned to like dissing on a uh, chiropractic and stuff like that?" Because I because I do so many do know so many people 
that are that are into some of these things that you just mentioned i um yeah that's, i try not to call out too too much of it specifically by um by name yeah. and and re- remain kind of cagey about like what i believe in and what i don't believe in because okay. p- people do do get like these religious attitudes around believing that yeah um all of these things are really you know real and that they really work yeah. on like an absolute level you know even if they only Something you know, some things do help psychologically, like just as a ritual that people go through. And um, mm-hmm. I don't want to poop on. I don't want to poop on their party. Like my da- my dad's into. Um, hi, dad. If you're listening, <laughs> my dad's into. Uh, like, uh, you ever, have you heard of grounding? Grounding. Yeah. Like- okay. So. It's the idea that if you put your feet on the ground, then you you get certain um, electrons from being like directly connected to the earth or there's there's a special human body to to dirt contact that um, that needs to happen for our health. So uh, there are people that will that have um, pads that are connected to a grounding outlet, like in your electricity, the, the part that needs to go directly to the ground. They're like, if you if you just connect like a like a conductive pad to the grounding outlet, then it's going to do this for you. You can get a set of sheets that you can sleep in that's connected to the grounding outlet. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. So nice. I won't. That is the most re- <laughs> that is the most retarded thing I heard in a while. Wow, that's <laughs> so. It's a whole so I, there may be that. people I'm there may be people I'm directly related to that may or may not be um, into that. So like I I try like I care about these people or this person. Yeah, yeah. So I I try not to like just openly, you know. Um, make fun of something that they they really they're, it's it's a thing it's an action they're going through it's a ritual that they're going through that makes them feel like like really uplifted and like they're doing something about their lives i mean sure i mean they're not hurting anyone it's uh it's uh mm-hmm. it's it's fine uh you know it's really dumb but <laughs> it's not it's not dangerous for or you know it's not uh it's not bad uh, yeah. It doesn't have really any negative consequences. So I guess it's fine. It's like the flat earthers. I'm fine with them, really. Um they're not hurting anyone. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's the same level of uh, you know. So here's the dumbest thing I'm into. Um I've got this really big collection of incense at home because it feels homey for me having grown up around all the hippies, you know. Um and each incense is like printed with a special quality that the incense is supposed to have. Um, and so I know, like, I know that it's not, you know, real, 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 but like, I'll get affected, like, with a placebo effect, like, effect when I put on um, the, the energizing incense. I get more energetic when I put on the relaxation incense. I get more relaxed. And the, these smells aren't really um you know like doing doing this to me but i think it's kind of a a similar effect like when people associate you know the color blue with like relaxation and you put them in a blue room they get more uh relaxed or something like that like uh-huh. just because it says a certain word on the box then i start to feel that word when i burn the incense yeah it's and uh it- <laughs> It, it's and that, and that is fine. I mean, it's it's, it's the placebo effect. Uh, mm-hmm. We all know it, it works, and um, doesn't hurt anyone. Doesn't hurt anyone. Um, so yeah. Do you have anything that you do like that? Do you have anything that you do that's like it's not it's not like factually beneficial, but in your own weird little mind, it's it helps you out. Oh yeah, a lot, lots of stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I usually keep that for 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 myself. But so yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I choose to believe in, even if I know they're not true. Uh, I I still like I still enjoy having this belief. Uh, so uh, you know, it's always. Uh, Do you have any examples that are like safe to talk about on the radio? Oh, they they all are. Uh, 
for example or like that you feel comfortable talking about on the radio i guess yeah yeah, yeah. um for example uh there was this uh thing that circulated uh, uh, um, all around the internet a few years ago that psychological pain can only last up to 17 minutes and mm. that every everything that's longer is self-inflicted uh, it's not real pain mm. it's just you that keeps hurting yourself to uh you know because you you enjoy it in one way or another or um, you think that uh, it's it's good to be a victim or whatever and uh of course that's absolute bullshit there's no counter on the psychological pain it can be really short it can be really long but i like to believe it i like to believe that and um mm -hmm. when i don't feel good for more than 17 minutes i'm like oh well uh feeling bad is is, en is ending now uh mm -hmm. Time's up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's it's completely stupid, and I know it. I know, I know it's fake, but I like it. So uh, yeah, yeah. So that's it. Basically. That's a that's a nice one. I like that one. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that uh, went around on the internet uh, in um, in the past couple decades, uh, and a lot of bullshit that has been widely accepted as fact because when people see something printed a bunch of times. Uh, it just penetrates th their brain and stays there. And you become you become dug in, uh, just just because you've heard something a bunch of times. You're like it has to be true. It, you know, it's uh, it um, it leaves a mark inside your mind. For example, uh, what a really good example is that fact um, about the average person swallows. Eight spiders in their sleep during their life. Mm -hmm. You know, you've probably seen it a thousand times. Mm -hmm. And it's not, not only it's absolute bullshit, but it was created by a teacher who wanted to, sh to demonstrate to uh, his pupils um, how fake information spreads. Mm. It, was, it was part of a. Not really an experiment, but a, like a, a demonstration um, about your, yeah about uh, fake news and how they spread and uh, and it like it it went way beyond uh, what the teacher intended I I think uh, and, yeah. and now you it ended up like a lot of other places on the internet as being published as fact after people had seen that meme yeah 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 it, it's it's everywhere all the time. I still hear it uh, or read it regularly. And um, and of course, it's absolutely fake. Nobody swallows spiders in their sleep. That's absurd. Mm -hmm. uh, so spiders are kind of smart. They would not come into an, an animal's mouth just like that. So, But yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff like that. And... Uh, Do you have something something like this? I know, yeah, you, you said the incense. Um, the incense, oh yeah, my, my weird, weird rituals, um, stuff that I do. Um, yeah, I, yeah, incense, what else, what other weird things do I like to do? I'm into, I'm into weird spirituality stuff, like I, like I identified for a long time as a, atheist but then um when i got like started doing 12-step recovery for my uh addiction problems i had to start getting you know revisiting my ideas about spirituality and um you know ba basically the idea is like you can't try to control when you're when you're a recovering addict you can't try to control everything yourself um so you have to let go of control so it helps to believe that you're trusting in something else to control things that you already can't control. Cause like we have this delusion that we can control everything mm. and we can't. Yeah. <laughs> so like we gotta, gotta like develop a belief in something that can handle, um, what we already can't handle. Um, they talk about like the hula hoop of influence. Like there's, there's a, there's an area of space about the size of a hula hoop around you and that's what you can control and everything else is like, 
Hmm. you know, out yeah. of your control. So, um, so yeah, I started, I don't know, started doing lots of weird little, you know, prayer and, and ritual things that I, um, that I tried out and all of it makes me feel different. I mean, I won't stick with the same ritual for very long before I'll try, um, you know, something else, but, uh, yeah, all, like it, you know, it's weird. It's weird believing in something and also not believing in it. <laughs> at the same time yeah but it's like that for 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 everything i mean at least for me um you know it's, it's like whether your heart says something and your brain says something completely different and uh mm -hmm. you know when you when you like listen to your heart or your gut uh, it tells you things and then you listen to your, uh, your mind and it tells you things that are completely different and uh mm -hmm. Like how how do you choose? It's it's hard. It's really hard. I mean, usually you should choose the brain, but uh, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's like, what if you know? Well, in the heart, the heart can open up the brain to new things too. Um, like like I I used to carry around like this this you know, really destructive belief that I'm supposed to like protect my friends from harm. And if they're like doing something that I don't agree with, like I have to bust in mm. and, um, you know, interfere with their decisions and tell them what to do. And I lost like pretty much all of those friendships, <laughs> ah, shit. you know, um, pretty quickly. <laughs> um, but like, that was just weird, you know, stuff that I was raised with, like just bad, you know, just like bad, bad lessons on how to be a human. Yeah. Um, but then when I, yeah, then I started, you know, believing this idea that, um, you know, oh, the universe is going to take care of these people. Like, if somebody's making a mistake, like, it's not your responsibility to say anything because they're going to learn from it oh, yeah. eventually karma. or not. Yeah. Huh? Karma. Yeah. Like, yeah, like karma. Like, they're they're going to they're going to learn from it or even more practical than that. It's like they're going to if somebody's messing up, they're going to learn from it or they won't. And yeah karma or the universe whatever is like is going to take care of them and it's it's not your responsibility um mm. and so like you could you know take that on as a logical thought but i also started taking it on as like a like a you know kind of a woo woo um esoteric kind of thing like wow there's there's just this force in the universe that's taking care of me and it's taking care of everybody and um yeah, like I, I, I can feel really safe in knowing that um, every everybody and everything's going to be fine if I stay out of it. And uh, yeah, my friendships have gotten a lot better <laughs> since then <laughs> without me like going and making everybody else's business my business, you know. So like the brain believed something that seemed logical, but it wasn't really logical. And then like the heart opening up and like and believing in kind of a bigger um, spiritual perspective kind of actually taught the brain to be more logical you know and like and and help me learn to believe like other people's business is their business and stay out of it yeah 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 i mean like it that's exactly the the same thing like your heart tells you that you should influence other people and that's uh that's your mm -hmm. emotional side that wants to kind of convert other people to your beliefs and then that there and mm -hmm. then your brain is like no let people do their shit in peace Leave and let leave. Uh, it's it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is it no? It's the opposite for me. The brain was saying the brain, like my for, as it, it felt for me. My brain was saying, um, you know, other people are incapable. You have to run everything for them. <laughs> like you huh. know better than they do. You know, my huh. brain was like really arrogant. It's like you know better than everybody else. So actually, yeah, my brain, my brain was messed up. Huh. So like my brain needed to like learn from my heart, which was like, wow, like it's really sad when like, like all this tension and bad emotions is created, you know? Um, so like maybe, maybe we need to like believe in um, kind of something more, more cosmic is there to take care of everybody and it's not your job to keep, take care of everybody. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, that's a little strange. Um, I mean, but I, I suppose. Um, we don't all work in the in the same way, mm -hmm. but yeah, compared to uh, how I am, that's really reversed. It could be a it could be a crazy American thing. I can just like <laughs> <laughs> chalk everything up and like, what do I know? I'm American. <laughs> Americans 
Americans are into, you know, believing we can fly and everybody gets their own planet. And yeah, these, yeah. Are, these are all very American, American, American original ideas that generated in America. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, <laughs> if you want to achieve success, you just have to work hard. <laughs> uh, the meritocracy, one of the biggest lies, uh, one of the biggest bullshits of all time. Oh, we could get we could get into yeah. I was listening to um one of your episodes. I think you're talking to a Canadian or an Austra Australian guest, and you're going on and on about the um you know the Amer Americans and like why why they work so much. And I really wanted to like be there to like butt in and <laughs> like let me tell you how it really is for us for us Americans and the shit that we believe and <laughs> stuff. Because I I think it's really funny. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, we we will have the occasion to have a, a nice triangle like that because uh, my next, our next guest is uh, our next guest. Yeah, he is he's from New Zealand, but he lives in Australia. So, okay. So, th oh, fine. Three continents will be represented. Yeah, a big old big old triad of uh, um, Europe, Europe, Australia, and North America. Duking it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when when's that going to be? I'm not sure, but I think in two weeks. Okay. That would that would Fun. that would work the best for me. Uh, and I, I suppose I suppose that it's the same for you. Uh, so yeah, mm -hmm. it would be like the the twenty first, properly. You know. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, well, I do have to get out of here in the next couple minutes. Any any final closing thoughts or sign offs or anything? Well, uh, we really live in a society. Uh, subscribe to my page. We live in such a fucking society. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was feeling that on the plane. I was like taking a plane yesterday, and it was yeah. so crowded and it was so delayed. I was like, "We live it." I was messaging you, like Nelson, "We live in such a fucking society." I'm gonna go see Joker <laughs> when I get off this plane, and I did. <laughs> That's great. But yeah, we live in a society. Sorry, I, I interrupted you. No, no, no. I, I was just. Uh... I was just thinking out loud, but uh, that will be it for today. Uh, so thanks everyone for listening. Thanks Lisa for co-hosting uh, this episode with me. It was a nice conversation. And uh, yeah, next uh, recording is, should be in two weeks. So uh, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, did I say it? I don't I never remember. Uh, I should have like a, a proper send off. I've been. Do you not have a send off yet? I've been working on it for years and I, I keep thinking about it. And I keep trying new stuff all the time and I never found a proper one that really works for me. Uh, do you have one? Oh no, we could set it we could set aside some time to workshop it. Just like do a whole like session of just like 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 brainstorming and throwing out weird send off phrases. And, we, we, like, should, we should have one saying what we like. We should have one episode where it's just send offs. <gasps> like hun <Yes>. hundreds <laughs> of send offs. <laughs> yeah, I want I wanna do that. Are you that sounds really good. You available <laughs> next Monday? Yeah, let's do let's do this the send off show. Perfect. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, for now, I'm gonna say uh, send off uh, TBD. Insert insert awesome send off here. Okay. Uh, work work working send off. See ya. <laughs>